And my name is Monica, and I work at the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission out of Lincoln. Um, and so I write the wildlife test, um, and I think it's really fun. I really like writing wildlife. Um, not that soils, you know, aren't fun or forestry isn't fun. I really like wildlife. Um, how many of you guys, just so I know, how many of you were here last year? Raise your hands if you were here last year. Oh, good. Not a lot of people. That's perfect. All right. So about, I guess, half. So um, so last year, um, we have, I'm going to have some similar things if you were here last year, but I also have some new things. Um, this year, we really want to focus on more of I guess, hot topics that are so, uh, centralized in Nebraska. So talking about wildlife diseases and prescribed fire and pollinators and that kind of stuff. So we'll go more into detail with that later, but we really want to focus on things that are happening um, in our state. Um, and there's a lot of things going on in our state right now. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, a lot of the test, um, or a big part of the test, usually a big portion of questions is usually about how to identify mammal tracks, mammal pelts, and mammal skulls. Um, we also understand that you guys don't always have access to a lot of, you know, mammal pelts. It's not like you have a mountain lion pelt sitting in the back of your closet at your school. So um, we, uh, I think Erica and the NRD provide um, a few things for you. I think like a couple skulls and a couple pelts I think so um, you can always use those and then also something that I would like to show you guys is um, at Nebraska Game and Parks I work for a specific program called Project Wild um, and we have what we call educational trunks that you guys can check out for free um, we have nine of these what we call mammal trunks throughout the state um, so if you head to our website it's just Nebraska all spelled out projectwild.org and it will direct you to this outdoor Nebraska page um, it says Project Wild on it and then over here, there's a link called Educational Resources. If you click that link, it will take you to all of our educational resources that we have. And if you go under Wildlife Education Trunks, click Learn More. We have a couple different trunks, but the ones that I'm guessing would be most um, helpful for you guys would be our mammal trunk, our bird trunk, or our prairie trunk. You obviously can check out any of these. They're free to check out. Um, if you click on the links, it tells you every single list of the contents that are in there. So for here, it says skulls. You have all of these skulls. First, you have all of these first. There's track replicas. There's binder activities. There's literature guides. Um, pretty much everything you would need. So you can go back and click through any of those um, on the screen. So again, probably the ones that are going to be most relevant for you are mammal, bird, or prairie, just because that is the stuff um, that we really focus on um, in there. So those are free for you guys to use. And if you click um, on there or if you go down, it gives you a list of all the places where you can check those out. So mammal trunk, here are your locations. And this is all on the website, nebraskaprojectwild.org. So, and you can always talk to me afterwards if you didn't quite get that down. So, all right. So there's that. So a lot of our um, things that we want to focus on are mammal tracks, skulls, and pelts. Um, these, we're not going to go through in depth. I don't care if you know what a deer mouse looks like. We're not really going to focus on those. We're going to focus on really um, kind of common large mammals that you're going to have in Nebraska. Um, one of them that we do focus on is a bobcat. So bobcats are very numerous in our state. We thought that they were very... Well, they are elusive, but we thought we didn't have very many of them. We actually do have quite a bit of them. Um, so bobcats are one that we kind of focus on. Their skull is exactly, I didn't bring one today. Their skull is exactly like a uh, house cat. So if you have a house cat and you know what their skull looks like, it's the exact same, except for the size is going to be a little bit larger. It's a pretty plain skull. There's nothing really um, astronomically um, that sticks out about it. Um, but we do like people to know what the skull looks like, their track. And I will give you guys some resources. You can pick up any of these things on the table here. And I have a um, booklet for you that has all the different tracks in it. So you don't have to like sketch this out really fast. But um, And then a picture as well. So looking at a pelt, we want people to know what their pelt looks like. All right, another one is a raccoon, um, another very common animal. Um, raccoons, they're going to be omnivores. We also like to talk about omnivores, herbivores, and carnivores, and we'll talk about those later. Um, their track looks very similar to a human hand, um, and their skull is another just kind of plain skull. When you get all of these aligned in a row together, they all look very, very similar to each other. Um, and that's why, you know, when you check out those trunks, you can physically focus on more time. Okay, here's the difference between a raccoon skull and a bobcat skull. So raccoons, again, just kind of another normal looking skull, but we'll get up in a minute and you guys can look at some of these. 
All right, possums. This is where it starts getting weird. Possums are one of the easiest ones to memorize because they're so different than anyone else. Um, so this is what their track looks like. It's almost like a hand, um, but it is like an alien looking hand. The thumb sticks out really far. They have really squiggly looking fingers. It's just really strange. Um, and then also their skull, this little part right here, it's called the ridge. Dogs have it too. It's because their brain is actually very large. Um, so they have this right here and it sticks up. It's very sharp. So if you ever see that um, on a skull, that's a possum. They also have teeth, a lot of teeth. They have more teeth than any mammal in Nebraska. They have 50. So right here, their teeth actually bend outside of their mouth. So that's another common characteristic when you're looking at their skull. Coyote, another uh, normal looking animal. Um, their skull is a little bit larger than a raccoon. Um, and a bobcat is going to be more elongated. Bobcats and cats are more short and squat. And then dogs are more elongated. So this one and a fox are almost exactly similar, but a coyote is going to be a little bit larger. All right, mountain lion, this one again is kind of a short squat looking skull. It's gonna be very large and have extremely large teeth as well. Their foot and a bobcat foot look almost exactly, exactly alike, except uh, the size. And we always tell kids, you know, if you're unsure, then measure. And we usually provide a uh, measuring tool for them to measure. Um, so when kids look at that, they say, oh, that's a bobcat or that's a dog. Does anyone know the difference between a dog foot and a cat foot? What's the difference? Yeah, which one has the claws? Yeah, the dog. So the dogs are going to have the claws sticking out. So if you look at this one, they retract their claws and there's no claw marks. So we know that it's going to be at least some kind of cat. Well, in Nebraska, we have two cats. We have really a mountain lion and we have a bobcat. Well, this one's really large, so it's probably going to be a mountain lion. So one thing we also want to focus on is the process of science. We don't want kids just to memorize this stuff. We want them to learn how does this fit into the ecosystem and how um, can we use process of elimination and how can we make good observations. All right, white-tailed deer is one of the most, most easiest ones. They're an herbivore, so they're not going to have sharp teeth, and it's a very large skull. Um, they also have huge eye sockets right here. Um, this is what their foot looks like. It's almost like a heart, an upside-down heart, um, and they're ungulate, so they're going to walk on their tippy toes. All right, any questions on those? I have a question. Yeah. Some of your, like the cards there? Yes. How do you tell the difference between a muley, a whitetail, and a pronghorn? Because they're almost all exactly Their feet, is that what you're looking at? Yes, it's almost like impossible to tell. We will not have like four different, we won't say which one's the mule deer, which one's the white-tailed deer. As long as you understand, or the kids understand what their tracks look like. So they could say, okay, that's some kind of deer, that's some kind of cervid, or that's an antelope or something. So yes, and the cards that you guys can take if you want to, we have these for you. So they have all the tracks in them and these are what the tracks are going to look like on the test maybe. Wink, wink, maybe. So yes, these are very helpful and I have tons of this stuff if you guys would like to take some. So all right, any other questions on mammals, skulls, pelts, identification? There might be others on here, but these are the most common ones that I really want kids and you guys to focus on. So all right. Another thing we want to focus on is ecoregions, and if you guys were here last year, we focused on this a lot. So ecoregions, we have four of them in Nebraska. This is going to be the kind of um, the main habitats that we have in Nebraska. The tall grass prairie, mixed grass prairie, short grass prairie, and the sand hills. So the thing that we want people to take home from this is that each specific ecoregion has specific things that happen in there and specific animals and knowing, you know, why do you find a Massasauga rattlesnake in the tall grass prairie, but you don't find them in the sand hills. So kind of things like that. Um, so tall grass prairie, this is where, well, I live, I guess you guys don't all from Lincoln, but this is where I live. So this is one of the most endangered ecosystems in the world. Um, tall grass prairie. Um, we want people to understand that even though it is a prairie and it's tall grass, this is a huge, huge biodiversity place. There's tons of insects. There's tons of wildflowers and forbs. Um, we have over 75 fish just in this little tall grass prairie area. Um, we have 53 amphibians and reptiles. Insects, we have tons of them. There's tons and tons of insects here. Um, and then also something we want to focus on is in this ecoregion is right down here in the southeastern corner, um, the flying squirrel. We have a flying squirrel in Nebraska. We have Massasauga rattlesnakes. We have a regal fritillary, which is a butterfly that's very endangered. Um, Nebraska, it's actually doing pretty well. Other states, they're 
they're almost not even there. Um, pallid sturgeon, and I have all these um, t threatened and endangered species pamphlets up there, so you guys can take one of those as well. All right, mixed, why is, why yeah. Is that the most in, why is that the most endangered? Um, urban sprawl, lots of habitat destruction, um, taking it out for agricultural fields. More so than any part of the world? That's what they say, yes. So even like the Amazon rainforest, it's a push, but yes, one of the most endangered ecoregions in the world or habitats in the world. In Nebraska, there's very few tracts of tall grass. Yes, tall grass yes, when you, yeah, exactly. There's not very much left at all, so. All right, so mixed grass prairie is right in the center of the state. There is a breakup right there where the sand hills kind of come into play, but it is the same ecoregion. Um, so this one is a mix, like it says, between tall grass prairies and short grass prairies. And so you're gonna have a mix of animals within those as well. The farther west you get, the more different animals are even in the eastern part of that, tall, of that mixed grass prairie. So you're gonna have different things. Um, this one we wanna focus on the animals here, um, American burying beetles. It's a little tiny insect, it's red and black, and it eats carrion, so it eats dead things. Um, it's really fun to trap these guys. What you do is you put a dead rat in a bucket. It's very scientific. You put dead rat in a bucket and you put it in the ground and then you come back overnight and you count how many beetles are there. Um, it absolutely stinks and you could get you know 50 different species but it's really really cool if you ever find American bearing beetle and sometimes the only difference between those beetles is how they fold their wings or one little spot over here or something on the inside of them that sometimes you can't even tell right away. So um, we want to focus on American bearing beetles. Burrowing owls are in this area. Uh, prairie chickens, whooping cranes, the Platte River is here. Um, Blanding's turtles are going to be up here. Um, this is also a transition zone. So just remember that when you're teaching your kids. It's not quite this area. It's not quite the west. But it's a transition zone until you get to the east or the west. All right, sand hills. Um, this place is, again, very unique in Nebraska. Um, it's not just sand. There's a lot of other things that happen here. Um, they don't get a ton of rain, um, but yet we still have lots of native prairie plant species. A huge one that we want to focus on is blowout penstemon, this one right here. Um, it's only formed in blowouts on a dune, so um, very rare to find them in Nebraska. It's an endangered uh, species of plant, but we still have 27 reptiles and amphibians. We have trumpeter swans out here. We have burying beetles, um, fine scale dace, which are tiny, almost minnow-like animals or fish, um, white lady slipper, western prairie fringed orchid, and again, Blanding's turtles when you get up here by the Niobrara. All right, short grass prairie. Um, this one, again, it's way different than on the eastern side. It has less rain. We have lots of diverse um, things that are out here. We have elk out here. We have mountain lions up here. We have bighorn sheep. Um, we have lots of different types of fish that are from the western side that are not on our eastern side. We have box turtles, swift foxes, um, prairie dogs, pronghorn are also out here, which are not on our side of the state. And then, well, about here is when you start getting mule deer. So western half is going to be mule deer. Eastern side is going to be white tails. All right, any questions on those? Is this a PowerPoint that's on the <clears throat> website? Or? You're going to get it today. I just didn't want you, people to be frantically writing and not paying attention. So right. I'm, you're going to frantically write anyway, but all right. Threatened and endangered species. So this is a little different than last year. I did not talk about this as much, but this is a huge hot topic. Again, it's becoming more and more of an issue. Um, I actually had to update the PowerPoint and I will give you guys an updated list of our threatened and endangered species in Nebraska because yay, the river otter is not threatened anymore. It's delisted, so that's kind of something that changed things. Um, one thing, it's not very long here that we want to talk about, but we want to see the difference between a state listed species and a federally listed species. So state means that Nebraska thinks that it should be a state listed species. So, their habitat is going, we don't have very high numbers, or maybe we don't know a lot about them, so we have to list them as threatened or endangered so that we can understand their population more. So state threatened species, we have 12 of them. Um, so piping plover, southern flying squirrel, western massasauga rattlesnake, those are things that we kind of want to focus on. Those are ones that we hear about a lot. Um, state endangered species, we have 15 of them. Whooping cranes, swift foxes, pallid sturgeon, American burying beetle, and blowout penstemon. So not too bad. Um, and then for state threatened and state endangered, they can be both. It can be state and federally listed. 
So that should be federal, not state, dang it. So federally threatened species, we only have four. One that just got on in the last year is called the northern long-eared bat. So that might, might be something to know. Um, federally endangered, we also have 10 now. Something that's also kind of new, and when we talk about this hot topic, um, mussels. Our uh, fish hatcheries out of North Platte are actually raising mussels now, which is kind of neat. Um, they, their, their life cycle is very unique. So what you have to do to raise a mussel, does anyone know where mussels live when they are first born? They actually act like a parasite. What they will do is they will live on the gills of fish. So they will live on the gills of fish until they're old enough and then they will drop off and then they will live in the dirt and bury themselves in the dirt. So our fish hatchery guys are raising um, tiny little mussels and what they do is they inject them on the gills of their fish and then we release them in the wild and then when they get old enough they drop off hoping that they will um, become adults and live through that life cycle. So kind of neat. Um, if you guys are interested, there's more information on our rare species website. I will give you an updated list of all threatened federally listed species that we have in Nebraska as well. All right, here are some vocabulary words. Um, the last couple years, I've, um, when I've been grading tests and I've heard things, these are words that kids might not know or they might have trouble remembering which is which. Um, so here's, and you guys will get a list of these. Um, Limiting factor, extirpated. Kids have a hard time with this. What does extirpated mean? Yeah, it was native to a certain area, but then it was no longer here. So mountain lions at one time were extirpated from Nebraska. White-tailed deer were actually extirpated from Nebraska at one point, which is really hard to believe because we have an overabundance of them. But at one point, they were not in Nebraska anymore, um, and but now they have either moved back or people have put them back. So we have extirpated. What is endemic? People always get these two mixed up. What does endemic mean? Yeah, only found in a specific area. Have you guys ever heard of um, the tiger beetle, the Salt, Salt Creek tiger beetle? It's a very um, special insect that is only found in two counties in Nebraska in the entire world. So that would be uh, an example of an endemic species. It's only found in one little area. Um, native and non-native, so knowing what is supposed to be here and what was maybe introduced or maybe considered an invasive species. Um, introduced, who can tell me a species that is introduced in Nebraska or was introduced? Pheasant. pheasant, yeah, pheasant's a great example. It's not an invasive species because it's not hurting anything, but it was not originally from Nebraska. It's not native. It was introduced to Nebraska um, and other parts of the United States from Asia. Um, carrying capacity, succession, invasive. Um, these words everyone should know, but I put them on here anyway. Carnivore, herbivore, insectivore, omnivore, piscivore. What's a piscivore? Fish. Yeah, good. Fish eater, good. Um, ungulate. That's another word kids have a hard time with and adults have a hard time with as well. What's an ungulate? What'd you say? Yeah, it's their split hoof. So ungulates are going to be things that walk on their tippy toes. So deer, elk, um, white-tailed deer, mule deer, um, moose, but we don't have those in Nebraska, but anything that walks on their kind of their tippy toes. And then density dependent factor. So these are good vocabulary words to know. I'm not saying that they're all going to be on there, but they are good words to know. All right, something we haven't focused on before, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on them, but um, family names, knowing which animals, not necessarily measuring or memorizing these, but knowing where animals belong with each other. Um, I want people to know that pronghorns are very unique animals. They are only the only, only living family um, in that group. So the only species that entire family, the rest of them are, are all extinct. So pronghorns are very unique animals. So know that they're the only one in that family in the world, and we have them in Nebraska. Um, rabbits are not rodents. Everyone in the world thinks rabbits are rodents, and they're not. Um, they're actually lagomorphs, so they have a special little, um, when you look at their skull, they have a special weird tooth in the back of their jaw. So they're all in their own family. They're not related to a mouse. Um, Mustelidae family are going to be things like skunks and weasels and uh, minks, that kind of thing. What's a felid? Heard it. 
Cat, yeah, good, cats, and knowing cats versus canids. And then the Didelphidae, possums, they're in their own special category. So they're the only marsupial that we have in Nebraska and in the United States, so they're also gonna be in their own. I'm sure there's a lot more other ones, but these are kind of the ones that we wanted to focus on. Just knowing where things fit together. So knowing that weasels and badgers and minks are all related, and knowing that all of our canids are related, and rabbits are different than rodents, and that kind of stuff. All right, this is something I think you learn in like ninth grade biology or probably even before. Kids still mess it up. So know the order of the taxonomic hierarchy. I don't care about this. Um, this is the thing I just found online for a red fox. It just shows the example of it. I don't care about that. I want kids to know which comes before, kingdom or phylum. It does genus or species come first. So kind of just knowing the order. And there used to be a like a mnemonic saying. I can't remember what it is. All right, you want to say that again louder? King Philip came over for grape soda. King Philip came over for grape soda. All right, so you can remember that. And again, this all fits into the other stuff that we talked about, just knowing where things belong with each other, knowing things that are in the same family, knowing things that are in the same order. All right, basic anatomy. Um, I just put a fish on here because it was a good picture. Um, but just knowing, I guess, basic, basic anatomy of things. Where is the, you know, what are the fins located on a fish? What are they? Sometimes I put those in there. So it's not just mammals and birds and things like that. Don't forget fish. Don't forget reptiles. Um, with reptiles especially, know that they have a vent. They, that is their, or their cloaca, that is where they excrete their waste. Um, knowing that they don't have legs, knowing that um, reptiles and amphibians have two or four legs, just things like that, just very, very basic things like that, just knowing basic, basic anatomy. Um, with fish, also, this is a great thing to know. The operculum, this is something that covers their gills. When you touch a fish, it's that really, really hard spot right here. It's almost like a bone. It is a bone. All right, um, also here's some uh, animals um, that are common in Nebraska. Maybe just knowing a few things about them. Knowing that a beaver, is it a carnivore, herbivore, or omnivore? A beaver, what is it? Nope. It's a herbivore, yeah, it's an herbivore. It does not eat meat at all. It eats things like grass and twigs and berries. Um, so knowing that is an herbivore. Um, knowing that a coyote, um, when you look it up, I think it says omnivore. We usually call a coyote a carnivore. Um, so if you look it up online, they can be omnivores sometimes, but most of the time we call them carnivores. Mountain lions are a true carnivore. They are a cat. They have to be a carnivore. Um, possums, raccoons, um, knowing that possums are a marsupial. What is a marsupial? Yeah, they have a pouch, good. So knowing that that's our only one in Nebraska and in the United States. Um, just kind of knowing a little bit about these uh, animals is good too, where you would find them. Whooping cranes um, is a good one to know. They're highly endangered. I think last year in Nebraska, we only saw like 16 of them come through. Um, we usually see eight in the 80s. Um, there's only like 200 left in the wild. So they're highly, highly, highly endangered. Um, Bighorn sheep are good. You know, where do you find them? You're not going to find them in Lincoln, Nebraska. You're going to find them on the western side. Why do you find them on the western side? Um, prairie chickens are good to know. Turkeys, just a little about them. Turkeys are another one of those species that were once extirpated from Nebraska. Um, and we actually had to borrow some from other states to get our population going again. And now we're one of the states where people come to get our turkeys to reboot their population. So that's kind of interesting to know as well. All right, so Nebraska hot topics. Here's a few of them. There's a, probably a ton more that I missed. Um, pollinators. So pollinators are a huge, huge, huge topic right now. Um, we just have this new initiative at Game and Parks. It's called Milkweed Watch. Um, so one of the things we really focus on with pollinators is going to be monarchs. Um, that's where, basically, that's where all the money is. So um, there's a lot of money put into monarchs, and that's what we want to help find, and that's what we want to help um, get their population back. So um, know what pollinators are, what they do for us, what would happen if all the pollinators left, um, and then maybe know some common pollinators that we have in Nebraska. They're not all going to be um, butterflies either, so just remember that. Has anyone ever heard of white-nose syndrome? 
what, what is white nose syndrome? Yeah, what happens to them if they have that? Yeah, so basically it's this little white fuzzy fungus that grows on their mouth and it affects their respiratory system. We just found it for the first time this last year in Nebraska. Um, so in our, one of our caves in Nebraska, and it happens usually with cave dwelling bats. Um, they're so close to each other that it's really easily spread. Um, it's a little white fungus that grows and affects their respiratory system and it wakes them up during hibernation. And um, when they're supposed to be sleeping, they burn a lot of their fat off. And then by the time spring comes, they're usually, they usually have no fat reserves left. So they unfortunately die. Um, so that's a huge thing that's coming just found in Nebraska. Um, another one I just thought we could put on here is the emerald ash borer, which was found in Omaha this last July, um, which who knows, you know, by the time we get to summer where it's going to be. But what's the emerald ash borer? What is that? Yeah, it's killing all the ash trees. So it's this little green beetle that's from Asia, and it's burrowing into the trees, the ash trees, and it makes all these little squiggle marks in it, and it basically kills the tree. So um, that's one of the things that also was found just this last year in Nebraska. Um, EHD, this is nothing new, but it's, again, something to know. Um, so EHD, or the epizootic hemorrhagic disease, when we talk about this, it's something mostly found in deer, white-tailed deer, sometimes in elk, um, but mostly white-tailed deer and mule deer. And it's a disease, a little midge or a fly, that will infect the brain, um, and basically it makes them... It makes them um, bleed from the brain and then they get really thirsty so they go to water and then that fly jumps to the next one um, when they come to get water. So another disease, climate change. I'm not going to go into anything specific with this but knowing um, if you look at maps in Nebraska over the last even 10, 20, 30 years, our climate's changed. Things are moving around. We have mountain lions now. We didn't have mountain lions 30, 40 years ago. Um, so lots of things have changed. Just knowing Climate change is something real, and in Nebraska, we're definitely seeing the effects like a lot of other states are. Mountain lions, um, again, nothing new. We have them in Nebraska, knowing, you know, they're a large cat, they're carnivores. Uh, I have, yes, I had to steal these from the mailroom. Um, apparently, people, <laughs> we can't keep these in stock. So I have a whole thing of mountain lion stuff on here if you want it. I think, I don't know if I have enough for everybody. I stole what was ever in the mailroom. But if you do need more, I can find you some. So you can take one of those as well. Have you heard of people seeing they're supposedly mountain lions, but they're black? We've had some sightings over in our area. Where do you live? Um, by Blue Hill, south of Blue Hill. What's like a big town close to that? Hastings. Hastings. Okay, okay, okay. Um, possibly. I reported seeing a black cat so big it took up like half of the it could be like a morph yeah it could be like a melanistic morph or something or i don't know i haven't heard anything about that so mm -mm. i did see a, a black bobcat about two months ago. yeah but i think he just forgot to make spots he just oh okay yeah <laughs> I mean, that definitely happens, like, just like people, you know, we have different colored hair, we have different colored eyes, we have genetic mutations, animals have that too, so they could certainly be black bobcats, there's black snakes, we find them all the time, there's, you know, albino things, so there's lots of different colors of things too, so. Um, invasive species, this is one to know as well, maybe, uh, let's see, I don't think I provided any of that because I didn't have any, but... Um, if you go to any invasive, Nebraska invasive species, this is a really great um, website. The lady that runs it, her name is Allison Zock. She's our invasive species coordinator in Nebraska. If you ever need or want things, she will be more than happy to send them to you. I think you can even request them online. Um, but she has tons of educational materials for you guys that are free. There's lesson plans. There's activities. Um, there's pamphlets that she gives out. I think you can print them off online or if you want the nice bound ones, she has those too. Um, they talk about aquatic invaders and the mammals, birds, insects, plants, I think everything. So this is a really great site. It's just anyinvasives.com. <coughs> um, Allison Zock, um, A-L-L-I-S-O-N and then Z-A-C-H is her last name. And then you can even divide it by your group and since all of you are gonna be high school, but if you do want other things, you can click here as well, so. 
All right, so that's a really great website for you guys to check out as well. All right, so invasive species, knowing which ones are invasive versus introduced, because that's a huge difference. Um, prescribed fire, we've gotten a lot of bad reputations about prescribed fire lately, especially with all the things, if you guys remember last year, the stuff that was in the Flint Hills. Um, we had a lot of smog and smoke and um, stuff come up from, the, from Kansas, and we had to actually cancel a lot of our outdoor events or told people, you know, it's not safe to be outside. Um, so, you know, why are you burning? Why do we do this? We'll know that we do it so that we can have good prairie. We can we do it because we want biodiversity. We do it because um, it helps prairies. You know, it's been done for hundreds and hundreds of years and we're still continuing to do it. Um, and it's a very good thing. So just knowing that prescribed fire, why we do it and what's the point of it. Um, we went over threatened and endangered species. So this is nothing new. Um, monarchs, again, that kind of goes back up to the pollinators. And wildlife diseases, we touched on a lot of those. Um, another one to know is that the bighorn sheep are getting pneumonia. <laughs> That's something that we've had issues with. Um, we just had a huge die off a few months ago of our bighorn sheep because they caught pneumonia. And since they're so close to each other, they transfer it um, via their nose or their nostrils. Um, so pneumonia is something that they've been getting. Um, let's see. Chronic wasting disease is something that happens within our deer species. You can test for that. Um, we do tests randomly. We did them in the Southwest this year, and I'm not sure what the um, report was on that. Um, and then also legislation. You guys should have online, you can print them out. I have them here too. Um, on this sheet that's on the NRD website, it's all the Nebraska topics for wildlife. In the back, it tells you a little bit about Conservation Heroes, which we didn't cover today. Um, it tells you a little bit about a few of those, and then also wildlife laws. So knowing what the Pittman-Robertson Act is, or knowing what the Endangered Species Act is. So those are all in here as well. So make sure your kids take time to kind of learn those as well. 